today I'm filming the first instalment for the retrospective series. Yes, so finally uh, I've gotten around to filming this after the end of the Brief History series and um, after running through se uh, several videos that I had ready to upload. Uh, now we are ready to start the uh, retrospective series. Uh, so of course, naturally, we're starting with the first Doctor. So this is uh, my standard first Doctor figure. Um, and yeah, basically, standard first Doctor figure. I don't know exactly where this one is from, actually, now that I think about it. I believe it might be from, if I just pick it up. Oh, no, it isn't. So yeah, I don't know where this first Doctor's from, but it's very nice nonetheless. So as you can see, face sculpt is uh, very nice. It's really dark. Can I get this? There we go. So, there you go. Uh, the very nice uh, face sculpt on here. And we've got a bit of a sort of pinkish paint around the eyes, may maybe to make him look a bit more ill or old, seen as unfortunately William Hartnell was quite ill when he was filming Doctor Who. Uh, and then, of course, the hair as well. Also very nicely sculpted. Unfortunately, it's just plain white. We haven't got a bit of a black wash or a grey wash to uh, bring out some of the detail costume wise as well uh as you can see we've got your standard william hartner costume here the black uh coat along with this sort of waistcoat you can see there with a the sort of uh square pattern across it and a monocle you might just be able to make out there there we go it's a monocle and um as you can see we've got his nice little neat collar which he wore uh and the cravat which he did have on uh and his there's even, of course, the accurate detail of the ring on his finger there as well. And then uh, on this variant specifically, we've just got plain grey trousers and the standard William Hartnell sort of little brown, if I can get them in shot, shoes or little, yeah, I think they're probably shoes. But there you go. Uh, but I have a couple more versions of William Hartnell. So let's bring out this. Sort of thing. If you haven't got the gist, I probably should have explained this earlier. If you haven't got the gist of what these videos basically are going to be, they're going to be very similar to the brief history series where I would go through all my Doctor figures or all my Cyberman figures, but this time I'm going through all my first Doctor figures, all my second Doctor figures, so it'll include figures you didn't see in the brief history series. I can just sort of get some of the glare off there. Um, this William Hartnell is slightly different, not very different, but slightly different. You can see the walking cane here along the side here. Uh, this is the first Doctor and Source Commander Dalek pack from San Diego Comic Con, hence why it's still in its packaging. Uh, you can also see the Source Commander, Commander Dalek here, which is the same sculpt as the later um, inva uh, Dalek Invasion of Earth Daleks we saw, but painted just straight black, and you'll see the differences with the other Invasion Dalek later. Uh, as you can see here on the face, the paint job is slightly different. It looks like they've painted his eyes slightly wider and uh, maybe his skin tone slightly more natural. The sculpt is exactly the same on both of them. Uh, the waistcoat as well does have slightly different paint apps. I don't know how well you can see it through the packaging here, but this one's basically just got pinstripes that go straight up while this one has got uh, sort of squares. And then um, the most notable difference being I just move the camera down. Uh, the trousers here, as you can see, are sort of cream colour with um, a, a square pattern painted on. While, as we said earlier, these ones are the stand, or just a plain grey. Which is why I do actually prefer this first Doctor. But of course, he's still in the packaging for limited edition reasons. The set was also released in black and white. But speaking of the black and white set, I do actually have... The black and white first Doctor, there we go. Uh, now you will have seen this in my Christmas series video uh, not too long ago. And it's a fantastic figure actually, I really love this. Uh, it's, like I said, from this exactly the same set, but in black and white rather than a color paint job. So these two first Doctors, exactly the same, except of course this one is painted in black and white. And it's really nice actually. Um, yeah, not much to say about this figure that I haven't said about the other two, except of course the paint apps are majorly different. It's been painted in a grey colour, so to sort of emulate the colours that were seen on screen. And as you might have noticed, I am actually displaying this first Doctor with his walking cane accessory, um, which you can see just plonks nicely into his hand there. Uh, fantastic figure. This is actually one of my favourite figures in the collection because it's just so weird to see a figure 
in black and white, obviously, because I've seen almost all of William Hartnell's episodes. Uh, it's not weird for me to see William Hartnell in black and white, but a figure is uh, rather different to see in black and white, and it is one that I really do love having in the collection, and, um, and I do, uh, yeah, like I said, it is a really fantastic little figure. So, let's start off pretty early in the, uh, in the first Doctor's era with uh, another Dalek from the Dalek Invasion of Earth. So this Dalek, if I just pan down the camera, is from the same story as this one here in the set, as you can see. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's actually, the sculpt is exactly the same. And in real life, actually, these props were the same, but one week they decided we need the Dalek to be in charge of everyone and they need to be sort of the big boss Dalek. So what they did is they painted it slightly differently. They filled in this uh, shoulder section with black and they filled in these alternate silver panels with black. And then next week, uh, they bring out the new Source of Commander Dalek, um, which is the fully painted black version. This, however, the unfinished version, is the Saucer Pilot Dalek. So obviously, as you can guess from the name, they probably flew the Saucer. Now, as you can see, this, this Saucer Pilot Dalek is slightly damaged. I did get this one very early on in my collection, um, which that was back in the day. Well, these figures did get a lot of use. Um, so unfortunately, as you can see, there are some pretty bad scratches on the dome and one of the ear bulbs are missing. And as you can see, there's uh, there are quite a lot of paint scratches, especially around the hemispheres. But yeah, this Dalek is fantastic. Like I said, exactly the same sculpt as that one. We've even got the little dish on the back section. Um, the plunger and 60s exterminator arm. I'm planning to do a video on the anatomy of the Dalek, which uh, I'll go through the names of each of the different parts of the Dalek and the differences between the different eras. Not much else to say about this Dalek. Uh, it's a lovely little Dalek to have in the collection. One of my earliest Daleks, actually. This was from the Dalek Collector set. Number two, yeah, a lovely little Dalek to add. We've even got the accurate Fender, which is this sort of massive one, and the, um, the sort of standard 60s one added on the top. But a lovely Dalek to add to the collection. And uh, from a pretty fantastic uh, Doctor Who story there as well. But it doesn't stop there for Daleks, in fact, there's lots more Daleks to come for the first Doctor Zero. And let's move on to uh, deciding what to do next. The Mechanist Daleks. Yes, now technically these are first Doctor Daleks. Technically they are um, movie Daleks. Uh, but as you can see, another lovely Dalek here. There are some massive differences, as you can see with this one. The Fender is different. It doesn't have the 60s one on top of the big one. Um... The skirt section is exactly the same, as is the shoulder section, but the gun has been swapped out for an Imperial Dalek gun, rather than the standard 60s Dalek gun, because this was more accurate uh, to this Mechanist Dalek. And the ear bulbs have also been swapped out for ones that are these big sort of jam jar design, as they're referred to. And of course the paint job, as you can see, swapped out for this one, which is much darker in, this, uh, in the blue for the hemispheres, and the, this blue's been carried over to the dome section, it is slightly metallic, you might just be able to make out there, um, and a light blue uh, for the fender here, and a sort of yellow round here to emulate gold, they could have probably chosen a little bit of a better colour to emulate gold, but nonetheless, this is still one of my favourite darks in the collection, you might notice I've only got one here, I do have both, because the Mechanist of Dark set that this was released in came with two of these darks, exactly the same, which is why I've only brought out one. Um, but yes, another fantastic Dalek to go alongside. The rest, as you can see, because it doesn't have this section on the base, uh, this Dalek is ever so slightly shorter than this Dalek here. And you might be able to notice uh, they've used a bit more of a sort of, a bit of a darker gray with a bit of a metallic finish rather than the standard sort of plain flat gray that they used on um, the 60 Daleks. But yes, um, another fantastic addition to the collection and another lovely Dalek to uh, to be in the William Hartnell era, which unfortunately we didn't get a lot of figures from the William Hartnell era that wasn't uh, that weren't Daleks. But this Dalek is very similar to another Dalek in the collection, and it is the guard Dalek from the Chase. Yes. Um, now this Dalek is actually slightly rarer than other Daleks because it was really popular in its original release, which was um, in the sound effects Daleks waves. So you could press, I think it was that hemisphere, that one or that one. Or was it on this side? It might have been... No, it would have been that one, because you can see the rim around it. So yeah, it's that button, and you press that, and it would make sounds. As you can see, these two Daleks are exactly the same, um, and that's because Doctor Who were running low on Dalek props, so they borrowed some from the company that made the, the TV movies, or the, the Dalek movies, rather. Um, so you might notice the gun isn't the 60s gun, 
uh, and you will probably notice the color scheme is the same except we've got the new egg cup lights as you can see here um, brand new design egg cup lights there you go instead of the massive jam jar ones and the fender no longer is that massive blue one it's been swapped out for the standard 60s dalek one i do actually really like this one it does look a bit strange uh, in the william hartnell well in the 60s era really because the 60s especially the 60s uh, there's a lot of white and gray and silver um and it, it's quite weird just having blue and yellow mixed into the middle but it's a nice dalek nonetheless and it came in the dalek uh the history of the dalek set number three i think yeah I think it would have been number three. Alongside this Dalek, which is your standard 60s Dalek, or the Chase Dalek, really. This is a Chase Dalek. Um, there are slight differences with this Dalek to uh, other Daleks. This one has the um, the slats around the shoulder section, which you might have noticed. And the backstory behind the slats is that um, they're meant to be like solar panel things so that the Daleks can have uh, energy from wherever they need it. Of course, we're back to the standard 60s gun because this is not a borrowed prop. We have the new egg cup lights, as you can see there, and the eye stalk. For some reason, they've painted this in a, a, a bit more of a baby blue uh, compared to the sort of standard blue, which should be sort of this color here. Um, yeah, don't know why they've done that, but I quite like it. And um, yeah, pretty much the same as this Dalek, but obviously in a new color scheme. Uh, and we've got the new 60s gun on there as well. But yeah, another fantastic Dalek and um, one that I'm very glad to have in the collection. Um, but we have one more Dalek left, and it is the Pyroflame Dalek from uh, the Dalek's Master Plan, yes. Um, now, this Dalek also got a recent re-release, but this is the original release that came in the enemies of the first Doctor set, along with two other figures, which we're gonna see in a second. Uh, yeah, this figure is pretty much the same as the um, the uh, Chase Dalek, which is, you know, just off shot. Uh, pretty much the same, except we have, instead of the egg cup lights, we've got the ball, if I move the plunger out of the way, we've got the ball lights, just painted in, or molded out of an orange plastic. And uh, the more accurate multiple ringed eye stalk there, as you can see, um, that's the one that was on the, um, on the Chase Dalek, and that's the one that is on uh, the uh, Pyroflame Dalek. Now, the Pyroflame Dalek is more accurate to the Pyroflame, of course. Um, yeah, this Dalek, again, is pretty much just your standard 60s Dalek, except now we've got the grey painted in the gun box instead of the sort of white here, which is more accurate. I don't know why they changed it to white recently. It should have stayed grey. Um, but we have the standard 60s Dalek, but we've also got instead of the plunger, a flamethrower attachment like was seen in uh, the Dalek's master plan. Now the flame can be removed and I'm gonna do so to take a quick look at it. It's been sculpted quite nicely. Obviously you don't need a lot of detail in there because it's a transparent plastic so you wouldn't see it very well. But the detail we have got, you can see uh, sort of in the glare there and it's been done really nice. And they've cast it in a way that it changes color, you might be able to see. So it starts off, obviously, back here, really sort of a deep orange-red sort of color, very powerful, and then it moves into a sort of a, your standard orange color and a much lighter orange, even slightly yellowish color right at the tip there, obviously, to show uh, how flame changes color the higher up it, it gets. And of course, it is sort of sculpted pointing upwards because, of course, heat rises, you know? So there you go. And then, of course, we can take a look at the uh, the new plunger attachment. Pretty much the same as the standard classic Dalek plunger, but uh, of course the actual plunger section has been swapped out for this very simple, uh, it's just a little cylinder sort of thing with a hole in the middle where you can put the, uh, the flame. Uh, we've even still got the extender sort of poles inside, I don't know how well you can see that, but the detailing of that little ridge there to represent where one pole ends and the next begins. Uh, but yeah, another fantastic Dalek to the collection, and like I mentioned, this came in the enemies of the first Doctor set, alongside two more fantastic figures. Those were the Roboman from the Dalek Invasion of Earth, so that actually came with this Dalek here, and this Dalek behind the Pyroflame Dalek here. Now, this figure is pretty much exactly the same as the Scaroff figure which was seen in the City of Death set featuring uh, Scaroff, obviously, uh, a 
City of Death Tom Baker figure and a Mona Lisa accessory for uh, Scaroff. So the um, the costume is actually exactly the same. Or well, no, the suit is, but the chest piece here has been swapped out for one that's got uh, a slightly different shirt sculpt to accommodate for these letters that were on the Rubber Man sort of uh, shirts. And of course the head's been swapped out because it's not Scaroff in the story. And now it's just sort of, I don't know, a random face sculpt they've made. But it's got this big sort of neck brace thing on, which is accurate to the story because the Daleks put these neck brace things uh, onto citizens of Earth to make them sort of Dalek slaves. Uh, you can see we've got wires sculpted along the sort of bottom here across the top uh, and accurate to the story. And of course, also accurate to the story, we've got these radar dishes where the rubber men would receive their um, instructions. As you can see here on the finger of the rubber men, we've got a ring here, a sort of gold ring that's just sort of flat and square. Now, if I quickly go and grab the City of Death set. So here's the City of Death set, it's quite dusty, as you can see, because um, I don't have a need to take it down often. But as you can see, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. Uh, if we look just on Scaroff's index finger, there's um, the ring, the same ring that's on the Robo Man here. Uh, but yeah, there you go. And then you can maybe take a look at the suit here and sort of acknowledge the similarities with this figure. Because obviously it's actually the same figure, just with a swapped out shirt piece, as you can see, and head, of course because it's not Scaroff, um, so the head doesn't look like that. But there was one more figure that came in the Enemies of the Third Doctor set, and this might be my one of my favourite 60s figures ever. It's my favourite Cyberman design, it's the Tenth Planet. Now specifically, it's the Tenth Planet Cyberman from the Tenth Planet, not from um, World Enough in Time and the Doctor Fall. We've got the really creepy sort of cloth face, uh, with the massive glaring eyes which are just black and the mouth which has got a bit of pink paint on it to sort of emulate the fact that there is in fact a human in there which is fantastic i absolutely love that from the character um got the massive handlebars of course with the uh, transparent sections there and the sort of radar dish on the top and we've got this pipe that comes down the back and the sort of ruffled material texture on the back of the head there as well We've got, um, I don't know, it's just sort of a randomly sculpted costume here, as you can see, but we've got these rings uh, here, and of course on the other arm, and these black stripes that go up the arms on the back there, and uh, on the front we've got, of course, the chest unit, which has got uh, a sort of grill or grate in the middle, and we've got these controls down here, and um, the gun that the Cybermen use. I don't know what they are, they're lights or something. Um... And, of course, the legs, which are pretty much the same as any sort of standard legs, except we've got this wrinkling texture all over them. The ring, of course, uh, is a similar, akin with the um, the two rings that are here, if we just focus on this. And the boots at the bottom, and then, of course, make no making notice of the human hands on these Cybermen, which was brilliant, and it's such a shame they didn't keep that feature. Uh, this isn't the original Cyberman, uh, Tenth Planet Cyberman. The, uh, the first Cyberman release actually was a Wave of Steel Wave Cyberman, I believe. This came in, like I said, the Enemies of the Third Doctor set. Um, the differences were the f cloth on the face was painted a slightly darker colour. And I believe there were slight paint application changes in the chest unit as well. But other than that, exactly the same. So there you go. That is the first Doctor uh, collection. Uh, that's my entire First Doctor collection, one of the smallest uh, eras of the collection, unfortunately, but that's because there isn't a lot of First Doctor material, uh, very sadly. Um, yeah, figures I'm missing. Uh, I'm missing the Thirteenth Doc, the Thirteen Doctors um, First Doctor, obviously. I'm missing the Unearthly Child First Doctor, and of course the Unearthly Child TARDIS that came alongside that, but that set goes for stupid money on eBay, seriously. It's not worth the money that scalpers are putting up. Um, I'm also missing um, the standard Planet of the Daleks Dalek. Oh, no, um, the standard um, Dalek Invasion of Earth Dalek. So if I just... Uh, pretty much this Dalek, uh, it's virtually exactly the same, except no uh, black dome. The sort of 
eye bulb at the end here is painted silver. So this is silver, this is silver, and these black panels that you can see running around the skirt section are also silver. But other than that, exactly the same. I'd quite like to pick up a standard Dead Planet Dalek. Basically this Dalek, except we've got the ball lights that are on this Dalek rather than the egg cup ones you can see here. And there's no slats around the shoulder section. It's more like this one. Um, so yeah. I would quite like to pick up that Dalek so I can have the original Dalek um, and I would quite like to pick up um, a standard Dalek Invasion of Earth Dalek because then I could say I have a complete uh, Dalek Invasion of Earth collection. I'd have the First Doctor, I'd have a standard Dalek, I'd have the Source Commander Dalek, the Source of Pilot Dalek and of course our lovely little Roboman you can see here. But yes, thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll come back next time for the second Doctor retrospective video. Um, I'm glad this series is finally coming out, so yes, I hope you are too, because um, I think it's going to be great being able to take a more in-depth and a bit of a closer look at uh, some of the figures in my collection. Seen as uh, in the brief history videos, it was, we did have a lot to get through each video. This video, uh, it's more specialised and more um, sort of uh, specific, so I hope you can come back next time for the next videos coming up in the series, but thank you for watching, I've been Dr. 242 and uh, yeah, like I said earlier, be sure to come back next time for the next retrospective video and the next whatever video I end up doing next. But uh, yeah, be, be coming back then.